My familiarity with the Nirvana Sutra is not that great. I have recited a few small snippets, and in the context of listening to one of those, one of the folks that heard it said that their favorite chapter within the Nirvana Sutra was the adamantine body. And so I went back to my BDK version of the Nirvana Sutra, Volume 1, and sure enough, Chapter 2 is called The Adamantine Body, and I'd like to go ahead and recite it for you now. At that time, the world-honored one again addressed Kasyapa, saying, Good man, the body of a Tathagata is a permanently abiding body, an indestructible body, an adamantine body. It is not a body sustained by food of any sort. In other words, it is a Dharma body. The Bodhisattva Kasyapa said to the Buddha, World-honored one, I do not see anything like the bodies that you have just enumerated. All that I can see is a body that is impermanent, destructible, made up of atoms, which consumes different foods, and so forth. Why? Because the Tathagata is about to enter Nirvana. The Buddha said, Kasyapa, now you must not say that the Tathagata's body is not solid, that it is subject to destruction like the body of an ordinary person. Good man, you should be aware of the fact that the body of a Tathagata has become hardened and difficult to destroy over an immense period of time, hundreds of millions of kalpas. It is not like the body of a human or a god, nor is it a body bound by fear, nor is it a body that consumes any sort of food. The Tathagata body is a body and is not a body. It was not born and it will not cease to exist. It does not learn, and it does not practice. It is immeasurable and boundless. It leaves no footprints. It does not discern things, and has no forms to discern. It is utterly pure. It has no movement. It is neither passive nor active. It is non-abiding and non-becoming. It is unflavored and unmixed. It was not created. It has no karma and no karmic fruit. It does not move. It does not disappear. It is not a thought, nor is it a number. It is inconceivable, and it will always be inconceivable. It has no consciousness in the usual sense. Its thoughts are impartial, neither separate nor not separate. It is not, and it is. It has neither coming nor going, and yet it does come and go. It cannot be destroyed, damaged, removed, or cut off. It does not come into existence, and it does not go out of existence. It does not dominate, and yet it is dominant. It is not realized, and it is not observed. It cannot be put into words, and yet it is non-linguistic. It is neither definite nor indefinite. It cannot be seen, yet it is clearly visible. It is without any location, and yet it is located. It is without any residence, and yet it resides. It is without darkness and without light. It has no quiescence, and yet is quiescent. It possesses nothing. It does not receive, and it does not give. It is pure and without stain. It has no disputes, having cut off disputation. It resides without any place of residence. It neither takes nor falls into a samsaric existence. It is neither a dharma nor a non-dharma. It is neither a field of merit nor not a field of merit. There is no exhausting it. It cannot be exhausted, and it is totally separate from all ways of being exhausted. It is empty, and yet dissociated from emptiness. Although it does not permanently reside anywhere, there is no cessation of its thought stream. It has no stains. It is without words, existing apart from words. It is not voice, it is not speech, and it does not learn. It does not weigh, and it does not measure. It is neither unified nor differentiated. 
It is neither an image nor a characteristic, though it is adorned with external characteristics. It is neither bravery nor fear. It has no quiescence. It does not become quiet. It has no heat. It does not warm. It is not visible. It has no external form. A Tathagata saves all living beings and yet does not save anyone which is why he is able to liberate living beings. He does not liberate anyone, which is why he awakens living beings. He does not awaken anyone, which is why the Dharma he preaches accords with reality. He is non-dual, and therefore immeasurable, unequal, evenly consistent like space, completely without shape, of the same nature as non-arising. He does not cut off what is not permanent. He always courses in the single vehicle, though living beings see three vehicles. He does not retrogress and does not turn away from cutting through all fetters. He is without any nature and abides in that nature. He is neither combined nor dispersed, neither long nor short, neither round nor square. He is not made of aggregates or skandhas, sense bases or ayatanas, or sense realms or datus, and yet there are aggregates, sense bases, and sense realms in him. He neither increases nor decreases, neither wins nor loses. The body of a Tathagata accomplishes merit that is thus beyond measure. There is no one who fully understands this, yet there is no one who does not understand this. There is no one who sees it, yet there is no one who does not see it. It is neither created nor uncreated. It is neither worldly nor unworldly. It is neither made nor not made. It is neither a support nor not a support. It is neither a composite of the four major elements nor not a composite of the four major elements. It does not arise from causes but neither does it arise non-causally. It is not the body of a living being, but neither is it the body of a non-living being. It is neither the body of a shramana nor that of a brahmin. This lion is a grand lion. It is not a body, and yet it is not a non-body. There is no way to fully communicate this. Aside from one Dharma characteristic, his virtues cannot be enumerated. When it enters the final Parinirvana, it does not enter Parinirvana. The Dharma bodies of Tathagatas have all accomplished innumerable, subtle, and virtuous qualities such as these. Kasyapa, there is no one other than a Tathagata who understands this. Kasyapa, a Tathagata body that has achieved virtuous qualities such as this is not a body sustained by eating of any sort. Kasyapa, as the virtuous qualities in the true body of a Tathagata are such, how could it also be subject to illness or stress, as vulnerable and fragile as an unfired pot? Kasyapa, the reason the Tathagata manifests illness is in order to tame living beings. Good man, by now you should understand that the body of a Tathagata is an adamantine Vajra body. From this day forth you should always focus your thoughts on this meaning. Do not think of it as a body sustained by eating. Moreover, you should explain to others as well that the Tathagata's body is in fact a Dharma body.